Today, we're gonna to take a look at the transition APIs that are new in React 18. And to show you how these work, we have this pizza app right here. This is an app that shows different styles of pizza and we can browse pictures of slices. So here I've got my New York style and I can look at a bunch of photos. You know, it's not technically a New York slice uh, if you don't have this greasy white plate underneath. You can also view different styles of pizza. So uh, up here, this next button is gonna load the next pizza, which is a Neapolitan pizza. And then we can load the Detroit style pizza. Now you may have noticed as I was navigating between these pizzas, uh, we saw this loading spinner. And that's because this app uses suspense. So up in my app component, we have this suspense boundary. And when we're loading a pizza, we show this loading spinner. Now the rest of the page uses this pizza component. So we've got some state to store the pizza ID. And then we have these two functions for incrementing and decrementing the pizza ID as you click these uh, next and previous buttons. Now this use pizza hook right here, this is a hook that fetches the data for the pizza and that's what causes this component to suspend. So let's take a look at this hook. Now the first thing you'll notice is that we already have all of our pizza data in here. And that's because this hook is trying to simulate a mock API. You can see that we have this uh, delay property, and this delay is gonna tell React how long it should suspend for as we're loading each of these pizza styles. Let's go ahead and change the uh, Neapolitan delay to four seconds. And now when we load it, you'll see that we're gonna see this loading spinner for four seconds. And this is kind of a, a bad UI. We were just looking at this you know, beautiful New York style pizza, and we were met with a giant loading spinner. So it would be nice if we could keep our New York style pizza rendered and not show the next pizza until all of its data is loaded. So there's a few ways to do this in React, but today I wanna to show you how to do it using transitions. So uh, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna import the use transition hook. And this comes directly from React. Now, down in our component, we are gonna use uh, that hook. So we're gonna call it use transition. And this is gonna give us back two items. And for now, we're just gonna ignore the first item. The second item is gonna be a function called start transition. And now when our button is pressed and we wanna perform a state update to the next pizza ID, we're gonna wrap that call in our start transition function. And now when I click next, you can see that the New York style pizza stays rendered and there's no more loading spinner. And this is what Start Transition does. It lets our app load data for the next pizza before rendering it. But there's one problem with this UI, and that is when I click Next, I get no visual feedback that we're loading the next style pizza. And that's where this first return value from Start Transition comes in. It is gonna be a Boolean called is pending, And we can use this in our template to show a message if we have a pending transition. So we'll say we're loading the next pizza, yum. Okay, now when I click the next button, you'll see that our message is gonna show for four seconds while we're transitioning. Now this loading indicator is kinda ugly. It causes our whole UI to shift. And so we're gonna replace it with a loading pop-up component that we already have in this app. And now when I click next, you'll see we get this nice loading message down here. Now, one interesting thing about these transitions is that my app stays fully reactive while it's transitioning. So while I'm loading data for the next style of pizza, I can continue to browse all the pictures of the New York slice. Okay, let's, uh, let's tidy up our app over here and also have the previous pizza call use a transition. And now the next thing I wanna show you is how we can cancel transitions. So let's go over to our pizza data and let's make the Neapolitan pizza load quickly, but we'll make the Detroit style pizza take seven seconds. So when I click next, we get a fast render of the Neapolitan pizza. And when I click next again, we're gonna load the Detroit style pizza, which is gonna take seven seconds. But now when we click previous, we immediately go back to the New York style pizza and we've just discarded the rendering of that Detroit style pizza. So it's pretty awesome how easy it is to just cancel and discard a transition. 
you know, if I was building an app like this and I had to support those two features, keep one page rendered while we're loading the next and be able to cancel a future render, it would be a lot more code than just two calls to start transition. Now, the next thing you should be aware of with these transitions is that as our use Pizza Hook loads data, it's going to put that data into a cache. So all the subsequent renders are going to be extremely fast. Now, if you look down here at this part of the screen, you'll notice something as I go between uh, the previous and next pizzas. So I'm just going to go back and forth a few different times. And you will see that some of the time, our loading message is going to pop up there. And that's because even though we have all of our data in the cache, uh, our app is still transitioning. So there's going to be a few milliseconds where this is pending Boolean is true. And so one way to solve this is anytime you're displaying a loading message, uh, you can add a property to these components that delays their rendering. So in this app, our loading pop-up has this delay MS prop, and it's gonna delay rendering of this message by 60 milliseconds. And that's enough time, that's more than enough time for us to avoid that flashing loading pop-up. So you can see, we can go between these pizzas again, and we never see that pop-up. Okay, so now that we've seen these transitions in action, I think now's a good time to talk about what's going on here. So when we call start transition to the next pizza ID, let's say pizza ID is one and we wanna to transition to pizza ID two. What React is gonna do is it's gonna make a copy of our app. It's going to run a second version of our app off screen. You can think of this second app as happening in another universe. And it's gonna run that app with pizza ID two. It's gonna keep our app at pizza ID one, but that app's gonna be running with pizza ID two. And as that app renders, it is gonna hit this use pizza hook right here. And that's gonna suspend. And that's gonna tell React something. That's gonna tell React that if it sets pizza ID two in our app, we'll end up suspending and we'll get that giant loading spinner. And we don't wanna suspend. We don't wanna see that loading spinner so React knows that it can't call this set ID yet. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna wait and we're gonna watch that app that's rendering in the other universe. And eventually it's gonna unsuspend. And when it unsuspends, we know that it's loaded all the data for Pizza 2. Now, as that app finishes loading the data for Pizza 2, it's gonna put that data into a shared cache. And so at that point, our app knows that it can safely call set ID because it can call set ID to pizza two, and our app can render by reading the data in the shared cache. And it's gonna look from our app's point of view as if that render was synchronous. So our app won't suspend because it doesn't have to go off and fetch any data. It's got it all in the cache. There's something I just love about this. I love that React can render another version of our app, observe it, see if it suspends, and then adjust accordingly. You know, it really makes these sort of loading screens and these transitions so easy to deal with and it gives us the developer uh, so much power over what our ui should show while we're loading data now transitions can do a lot more than data fetching and suspense but this was one use case that i found so cool that as soon as i saw it i knew i wanted to share it so i hope you're as excited about these transitions and react 18 as i am i'll see you in the next one